Welcome to Comic Tropes, I'm your host Chris. Today I want to talk to you about the guy that I consider the most exciting creator working in comics today. Sometimes you just end up coming across a creator who will reignite your passion for the medium by doing something new and different and engaging, and for me, that is currently Daniel Warren Johnson. He's a writer and an artist that I think is doing incredible things in comics. But I don't just want to tell you that he's talented. Today what I want to do is delve into his career and point out specific examples so that I can show you what it is about his artistic sensibilities that I find so exciting and cool. Before we continue, please consider hitting like and subscribe, and without any further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to be focusing my examples on work ethic, influences, composition, storytelling, character design, and action. I will be primarily drawing my reference points from only the first issues of series that Johnson has worked on, including, but not limited to, Space Mullet, Extremity, Murder Falcon, and Wonder Woman Dead Earth. I don't want to spoil these stories if you haven't read them yet. Homeschooled from an early age, Daniel Warren Johnson's parents had him attend life drawing classes from an early age. He found it tough, but stuck with it, displaying an aptitude for hard work. In an interview with Bleeding Cool, he spoke about his art tutor saying, quote, She kicked my ass, but in a good way. When I would draw a nose, I drew what I thought a nose looks like. But she would say, draw what you see. Don't draw what you think it looks like. And that was a huge lesson for me in terms of how representational art goes, and it taught me how to become a better artist. Another example of his hard work was how he broke into comics. Johnson obtained his degree in teaching, but found he didn't care for it. With his wife's encouragement, Johnson decided to commit to art 100% with no part-time job. If he couldn't make an art career work, at least he could say that he tried. But he did make it work, with his first work appearing in Eve True Stories, based on the video game. In a great story that Johnson tells, his father would discourage him at an early age from drawing things like spaceships, explaining that he wasn't likely to make a living doing things like that. And then, what's his first paying job in art? It's doing spaceships in Eve True Stories for Dark Horse Comics. At the same time that Johnson was picking up small jobs with Dark Horse and Marvel, he was working on his own webcomic, a sci-fi story called Space Mullet. It's a story involving corrupt space marines, aliens, robots, and class divisions. The main character is an ex-marine who leaves after his team commits an atrocity against a disadvantaged alien people. He becomes a bounty hunter with his alien best friend, and they go up against everything from demonic casino owners to his evil former superiors. Beyond showing readers his work ethic by committing to an ongoing webcomic at the same time that he was trying to break in as an emerging artist, the story of Space Mullet gives us an idea towards Johnson's innovative storytelling abilities. The webcomic format itself allowed him to structure things in a different way than perhaps reading it as a print floppy. And he also gave us a story that was much more somber and touching than a story with the title Space Mullet might lead you to believe. Johnson's work, of course, makes its biggest impact with its visuals. I love how clean his work looks in black and white. Space Mullet takes a page from Dan Clow's Ghost World and uses a blue tint to add a splash of color and depth to the work. It's effective. Johnson's art can have a sketchy quality to people, but often uses straight and highly detailed lines for environments, which can make the characters really pop. It's dynamic and eye-catching. And once you hear about his influences, it makes sense. Bill Watterson of Calvin and Hobbes for its mix of humor and detail, as well as outside-the-box storytelling. Jack Kirby for bold, exciting action and beefy, over-the-top characters. Katsuhiro Otomo for manga's eye towards character-based stories and visually sumptuous technical details. 
and all three influences love sci-fi. Beyond just comics influences, Johnson loves music, and especially heavy metal, which would inform some of his later stories. Dark Horse Comics gave Johnson some of his earliest opportunities. On top of Eve, they eventually published Space Mullet and also hired him on as the artist of Alabaster. Johnson has admitted that he found that work tough, and in order to keep himself excited and engaged with comics, he made another webcomic, this time based on Star Wars, called Green Leader. Green Leader is a short, heartbreaking, but exciting story told without any dialogue about rebel pilots who make the ultimate sacrifice battling the Empire in the Battle of Endor taking place during the movie Return of the Jedi. The balance of character drama and epic action is extremely well done, and the pacing of the starship dogfights is reminiscent of the strongest action sequences in Akira. Johnson spoke about his artistic goals with Sci-Fi Wire in 2017, saying, quote, I want more artists to push themselves in the way that many manga artists do, especially when it comes to action and energy in the pages. I'm seeing more artists start integrating this into their pages, which gets me excited for the future, whether or not readers are jiving with it. I will say that now that I've been reading manga for many years, I'm starting to study the old masters with more intensity, like Kirby and Simonson. I'm trying to connect the best of both worlds in a way, mashing the intensity and weight of the Kirby look with the precision and dynamics of Otomo. Lofty goals, I know, but it keeps me working hard. So I've spoken a bit about his work ethic and his aesthetics when it comes to action, but now let's delve into some of Johnson's more recent work so that I can address uh, ideas like page composition, uh, innovative storytelling, and of course, memorable character design. Daniel Warren Johnson would make his biggest impact in 2015 with a personal pitch for a comic called Extremity that Skybound agreed to publish when he met with them at that year's Emerald City Comic Con. Not to put too fine a point on it, but Extremity's title hints to how extreme it is. It also refers to a limb. Because Extremity is a post-apocalyptic revenge story. Set amongst floating cities that use long-forgotten technology, the story focuses on two tribes at war, the powerful Panzina and the poorer scavengers, the Roto. The first issue begins with our protagonist, Thea, losing both her mother and her hand to the Panzina. This is especially hard for Thea, as she was an artist, so this takes away her very identity. In a typical revenge story, we'd be behind Thea, as she earns her just revenge. But Extremity tells a variation on a revenge story by focusing just as much on the brutal battles as it does with the inner conflict within both Thea and within her tribe as decisions are made on how best to move forward. It's a much more complex story in that regard. The character design is also notable, as instead of focusing on existing ethnicities, the tribes have simple colored shapes marking their faces so that we always know who is who. Thea's father, Jerome, towers over everyone. Her brother, Rolo, is an intellectual and is slight. The enemy clan's leader, Nim, wears a goat helm, giving Nim a demonic appearance. All are easy to discern, even in silhouette. While I'm focusing primarily on Johnson's art, that's because comics are a visual medium, and that's the first thing you notice. But his writing is very interesting as well, and he has his own tropes. A lot of his stories focus on revenge or post-apocalyptic settings, and yet he takes those ideas and he fine-tunes them, and he finds twists uh, and turns. Um, his writing is honestly very engaging. And that brings me to the first thing that I read of his, which I found surprisingly down-to-earth and human, and it was called Murder Falcon. Murder Falcon, it will probably not surprise you, has a surreal and humorous bent to it, but is also surprisingly personal and affecting. The story follows Jake, a guitarist who has isolated himself from his love and his bandmates. His depression is interrupted when the world is invaded by monsters from another dimension. These massive monsters are similar to the kaiju you'd see in Godzilla or Pacific Rim. 
Conventional military stands no chance against them. But hope arises when a hero from another world, Murder Falcon, emerges and is revealed to be fueled by the power of heavy metal music. The story forces Jake to reconnect with his world in order to help Murder Falcon save the world. The action is over the top. The monster design is brilliant. And the story about love and loss seems to come from a very real place. Johnson has mentioned a big influence for him is music and playing the guitar. But Jake is not a simple self-insert. By the end of the story, we learn about what has made him withdraw, and it's not what the story initially leads you to believe. The characters are likable, with one of my favorites being a Norse metal rocker who emerges late in the story. In various interviews, Johnson has admitted that he tries to make his stories personal, he tries to find that real connection somewhere, but he's also a bit defensive, as in, he will give his stories somewhat humorous titles like Murder Falcon and Space Mullet as a type of defensive shield, like, hey, you're not expected to take it that seriously. Or he's worked in collaborations with books like, say, Ghost Fleet with Donny Cates. Well, he can't take full responsibility because he's just part of the creative team. Um, or, in his most recent example, he was doing a character that isn't really his. He was doing work for hire for one of the big two publishers. And I want to talk about that because Wonder Woman Dead Earth was, in my opinion, the best thing that I read from a mainstream publisher in 2020. Wonder Woman's most unique attributes are the fact that she fights for a peaceful world and has incredible empathy. In most iterations of her serialized superhero adventures, she leaves her paradise island when pilot Steve Trevor crashes on it, learns of the outside world, and leaves to make it better. But in that way, Steve Trevor is often a viewpoint character for the readers, and Wonder Woman is a bit of a fish out of water. In Dead Earth, Wonder Woman awakens without a clear memory in a post-apocalyptic Earth. We, the reader, are right beside her this time as she explores a new world, because we also don't know what to expect. And make no mistake, this is a harsh world, low on supplies, and where life is worth very little. Wonder Woman emerges to selflessly help the people she encounters and begins to give them hope. She's also an underdog, with most of her strength mysteriously gone, as she battles massive monsters called Hydra. There's no time in this story for Wonder Woman to make herself up and be glamorous. Every choice she makes results in life and death, but it also results in the characters around her changing. It feels natural and earned, and the story focuses strongly on Wonder Woman, with a few lines of dialogue explaining a way that the other heroes are now gone. We get brief flashbacks touching on Batman and Superman because how could a reader not wonder what happened to them? But it's very sad. The only main characters from DC continuity to appear aside from Wonder Woman are some of her fellow Amazons like her mother Hippolyta and the warrior Nubia and Wonder Woman's old nemesis Cheetah. Here, having been experimented on such that one of her arms is now a literal cheetah head. I don't want to spoil this story. All I can say is that it's very sad, it's also very hopeful, and the action is mind-blowing. The closest artists I can think of to compare Daniel Warren Johnson to might be Paul Pope or James Stucco, but that's mostly for their mix of sketchy plus detailed pages. Johnson approaches his environments the way some of the best manga artists do. Grounded, detailed, believable. It's in Johnson's overall decisions on composition that truly impress. The panels can often be broken down into basic shapes that guide the eye clearly through a page and imply motion. And when it comes to depicting action, Johnson will most often focus on the moment just after an impact, never the moment of impact itself. He shows us the result of an action, not the moment. If it isn't clear, I strongly recommend checking out Daniel Warren Johnson's artwork. Um, I think that Extremity, Murder Falcon, and Wonder Woman Dead Earth are all good places you could potentially start. It all just depends on whether you're more interested in extreme action, 
something a little more humorous, something more mainstream. But each of them is written and drawn by Johnson, and it tells a complete and finite story. So all three of those are great starting places if you haven't explored his work yet. And if you have, and you've missed those, check those out. They all get strong recommendations. But speaking of great art, let's take a quick look at what fan art came into the channel this week, and then I'm going to be back with some more recommendations. Jonathan Gum is putting out his comic Carpenter, the Vampire of Red Hook, on Webtoons and Tapas, and included me in a cameo. Thanks, Jonathan. Rowan Waugh sent in this sketch of me, the comic tropes guy. Jake McLean illustrated two fun pieces of artwork, one with me as a superhero, and another where I'm trapped in a gachapon prize. Stefano de Maddalena from Italy created this great art where I get to meet Dylan Dog. Rama Hughes made a flattering character of me and includes links for more of his art. Brian Long imagines Funky Flashman trying to sell me a Spider-Mobile. Cesar Fernandez has envisioned me as a drunk hobo. Finally, Christopher Deaton sends in art where I'm reading a Comic Tropes comic. Folks, if you'd like to share any fan art, as long as it has something to do directly with this channel, I'm always happy to share it. So you can send stuff like that into this email, comictropes at gmail.com. And then on top of that, I like to draw a winner out of the submissions to get a gachapon prize that I picked up in Japan. So that comes out of the uh, machine that was donated by Lunar Shine Store. All right, we have eight entrants. Let's spin the ball hopper and see. I'm gonna have to sp do it like this. Let's see who wins. I always wanna like really jumble it up, make sure that uh, people know that I have no idea who's going to win. All right, number two, number two. That was this artwork. Let's take a look at what you won. And then I have a few thoughts on Daniel Warren Johnson that I still want to share with you. Let's just check out real quick what you got here. All right, come on. My hands are too big for this little, little entrance hole shoot. I don't know what you want to call it. Yes, so number two, you won a One Punch Man action figure keychain of some sort. And I think that that is, it's really hard to make out there. Um, I don't know. I don't know which character it was from One Punch Man, but that's something you won. I'll send that out your way eventually. I'm really slow at mailing that stuff out, by the way, sorry. Daniel Warren Johnson. Oh my God, what a, what a discovery. Um, I'm kicking myself that I, um, didn't read Extremity sooner. I loved it. I loved it. Um, first thing I checked out was Murder Falcon. And I was like, I need more. But recently, Wonder Woman Dead Earth. Wow. Um, my favorite Wonder Woman story. There's no question about that. It was great. Strongly recommended. Uh, four issues that relatively recently came out, but probably is about to be collected in a trade paperback. Um, certainly by the time many people will have seen this down the road, that will be out as a trade paperback. Um, but beyond this, I strongly recommend checking out Daniel Warren Johnson's social media because he often posts sketches and commissions, and that's some really exciting stuff. You can tell that he's got a lot of passion behind this stuff. I especially love it whenever he does something like Godzilla or Star Wars. Oh my God, some of this stuff is just mind-blowingly cool. He really needs to be on a Star Wars comic now that I think of it, because he seems pretty passionate about Star Wars, so Marvel, get on that. <laughs> that said, I'd love to see him create more works that are 100% his own, because Murder Falcon and Extremity, um, uh, Space Mullet, they're all really interesting, engaging works. You can tell that they all come from a personal place somehow. Uh, even Wonder Woman, um, you'd like, well, how would that connect? And from interviews I read, I guess like um, Wonder Woman sort of takes under her wing some, some young people, and I, I think that that was 
sort of based on his relationship as an uncle or a father or something like that. There, there seems to be something very real about the way Wonder Woman is protective of some of the younger characters anyway. It doesn't feel fake or, or just sort of um, there to move the story forward. It seems to come from a real place. At least that's how I interpret things. I, I am getting something out of this anyway. Um, so anytime I'm seeing his artwork posted, uh, I get excited. So in the description below, I will have some links to some of his social media because I don't know, just uh, every once in a while you come across somebody that you're like, this is just right up my alley. And for me, that's Daniel Warren Johnson. I hope that it engages some of you in the same way. I have to imagine there's enough of us out there that, that get excited by the same things that, that you will also get excited. But I haven't, I haven't been this excited about an artist in, I don't even remember the last artist I got excited in this way. I don't even, like, this is just so exciting. Like, it reminds me of being a teenager and discovering all tons of new artists when I was uh, first getting into comics. That's what it's like for me. So, um, maybe a little bit of a shorter episode, but one I was passionate about. I hope I showed you some examples that backed up my arguments um, and that you'll, uh, you'll give it a look. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on Daniel Warren Johnson's stories in the comments below. I'd be very curious to hear some feedback. But I will be back soon with more Comic Tropes episodes, and until then, keep reading comics.